Good morning, students. This is Teacher Shane, and I will be your tour guide as we uncover some interesting facts and theories about our country, Philippines. Okay, but before we travel back in time, I have here questions that you may or may not have thought of. Okay, first, how did the Philippine archipelago come to be? Hmm. Have you ever wondered how was the Philippines formed? Okay, second, where did the early Filipinos come from? Hmm. Were they part of Magellan's crew? Who knows, right? So those are some questions. So we're going to be trying to look for answers as we go over our discussions. Okay, but before that, let's go over your objectives for this lesson. So at the end of the lesson, you should be able to first explain the characteristics of the Philippines as an archipelago. Second, differentiate the theories on the formation of the archipelago of the Philippines. And third, recall what noun and pronouns are. Okay, easy to achieve once we're done with our discussion. Okay, to continue with our lesson, let's unlock some vocabulary words that we'll be encountering in our discussion. So what are those words? First, you have your anthropology. This is a study of human beings and their ancestors through time and space and in relation to physical character, environmental and social relations, and culture. Okay. Next, you have your anthropologist. This is the person who, who is an expert in anthropology. Okay. Third, you have your archaeology. This is a study of ancient life and culture. Fourth, you have geologist. This is a person who specializes in the study of earth sciences, including the composition, structure, and origin of stones. Okay. Next, you have your fifth. You have Homo sapiens. These are species of bipedal primates with the ability to think, use language, and create use tools. Okay, so they are most likely human-like. They have human-like skills and behavior. Okay, next, you have your theory. These are assumptions or ideas. Okay, and lastly, you have your Pacific Ring of Fire. This is a great number of countries where volcano or active volcanoes can be found. So those are the words that we're going to be encountering as we go over in our lesson. Okay, so now let's try to get to know our country more. Okay. Have you asked yourself, or do you know how many islands do we have? How many seasons does a Philippine has? Okay. We'll find it out in the next coming slides. Okay. But one thing is true. We know that the Philippine is an archipelago. Okay. What do we mean by archipelago? Okay. If your answer is group of islands, very good. The Philippines is comprised of small islands. Okay. And the Philippines is covered, covers a land area of 300,000 kilometers. Okay. And as of 2020, the Philippines has 7,641 islands. And they are trying to, or they're actually discovering more islands that is part of the Philippines. Okay. Also, the Philippines is divided into three island groups. And those groups are Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Okay, or in short, they call it your Luz Vimin Da. All right. Next, you have here the Philippines is divided into 17 regions. Okay, question. In what region does um or is Baguio City part of? If your answer is Cordillera Admis Administrative Region, then great job. That's correct. Okay. Next, you have here, the Philippines has two seasons. You have wet and dry season. We do not have winter. We do not have fall. We do not have autumn, right? Only wet and dry season because we are part of the tropical. We, we, are, a, we are a tropical country, Next, Aside from that, the Philippines has jurisdiction over EEZ or Exclusive Economic Zone, which is up to 200 nautical miles from the country's baseline. Okay, so also the, we have territories in the oceans or in the seawater. And that is the reason why up to now, um, we have different dispute or territorial claim to Kalayaan Island and Spratly Island that's still ongoing. Diba? Because as, of, as per the EEZ, those islands are still part of 
the Philippines. Okay. Next, the Philippines is also an important trading route because of its strategic location and became a port for trading activities for countries um, whose routes cross the Pacific Ocean. Okay, there's a lot of countries usually use the Philippines as their ports. For example, United States, right? Okay. Aside from that, the Philippines also became a terminal, terminal, particularly its airport to aircraft coming from the United States, Japan, um, countries in Europe, and more. Diba? Next, the Philippines is also a military base for it possesses a coastline that stretches 1,150 miles. Okay. And lastly, the Philippines is also known. Okay for abundant fisheries since we are um, surrounded by bodies of water we are actually blessed with fishes all right so those are some informations that we may know already or we may not know okay but now that we know that let's try to go back to our first question okay how did this beautiful country formed okay how did the Philippine archipelago come to be? Okay. Do you have any guesses? Shrugging shoulders? I don't know. Shaking your heads? Okay. Let's continue and let's find out together. How did the Philippines come to be? Okay. So there are two theories on the formation of the Philippine archipelago. Remember when we say theories again, these are assumption or just ideas. Okay. But it, can be, it may be true or it may not be true. Okay, so the first theory on how the Philippines was formed is what you call your volcanism theory. Does the word imply volcano? Okay, and who is the man behind this volcanism theory? We have here Dr. Bailey Willis. He is an American geologist, and he believed that the Philippines was formed through a phenomenon called volcanism. Okay, why is that? According to his theory, the Philippine was formed from magma coming out of the out of the active volcanoes in the depths of the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so the molten lava and other solid objects from the volcanoes hardened and became the Philippine Islands. Okay, there are there are other researchers who supported the theory of Dr. Bailey Willis as evidence to that or to prove the theory. The similarities of the characteristics of the stones from underneath our mountains and from the depths of the sea were gathered and examined so they could compare it if it's really similar. Okay, so the findings were further confirmed by the fact that the Philippines is one of the countries located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. So remember, Pacific Ring of Fire is where active volcanoes are located. Okay, so those facts or those... um. Uh, what you call this, those proof or evidences actually kind of supporting the volcanism theory of Dr. Bailey Willis. Okay, so where, wh what are different countries? What are the different countries that belong to the Pacific Ring of Fire? So you have here, here, this is the coastline or a path along the Pacific Ocean characterized by active volcanoes and frequent earthquakes. So these are the red paths here. Okay, so though the countries that belong in the Pacific Ring of Fire are the following. You have their Chile, Mexico, United States, Antarctica, Russia, Japan, Philippines, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Canada, Peru, Taiwan, and Guatemala. That's the reason why we are experiencing a lot of earthquakes. Okay, Every day there's, there are earthquakes in the Philippines, but really a subtle, okay. hindi so wild like the others. Okay. So that is the volcanism theory of Dr. Bailey Willis, okay, that the Philippines was formed through um, magma caused by volcanoes under or depth in the sea of the Pacific Ocean. Okay, So think about it. Is it really possible that the Philippines was formed because of volcanism? Maybe yes, maybe not. Right? If you are not yet convinced, let's move on to the next theory, which is the continental drift theory. Okay, but before we continue with the discussion, I want you to look at the globe on the screen. The before and after appearance of the Earth. 
Do you notice something? Is there any similarities or differences? Okay. If the answer is that the before globe only have one continent. Okay, and this is what you this is what you call your Pansia. Okay. Well, the other one or the after globe has the seven continents that what or the continents that we know now. Right? So to better understand Pangea, I will be attaching here a video that you may watch. Okay, on how the before and after affects or happened. 125 million years ago. Okay. So there. That is your continental drift theory. And who is the man behind this continental drift theory? So we have here. We have here Dr. Alfred Wegener. He's a German scientist. Okay. Um, he published a paper explaining his theory that the continental land masses were drifting across the earth. Okay, sometimes plowing through oceans into into each into each other. So if you've watched the video, um, you will find there that the 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 land mass is actually clashed together just to join, okay, and creating mountains and something like that. Okay, um, he called this movement as continental drift. Okay, so also. The process of movement or deformation of the Earth's crust gives rise to large-scale features such as continents, ocean basins, and mountains is called diastrophism. Okay. Again, diastrophism is the movement or the deformation of the Earth's crust. Okay. When a mountain is formed or um, ocean basins are formed, this is called your diastrophism. Okay. Next, uh, the cause of the extreme movement of the outer rocky portion of the Earth is called the centrifugal force. Okay, this is the rapid um, rotation of the Earth that caused continents to divide. Okay, the more that the more that the more that our Earth revolved, okay, or rotate, um, it causes uh, the other um, land masses to separate, okay, or to go. To be divided okay over some time over time some parts of the lands of mainland asia were separated from it causing archipelago to be formed like the philippines okay it is believed that the land bridges once connected the philippines to mainland asia so before since we only have one continent okay, you have your pangea pangea um Every if you, if you are alive during that time, you could actually just cross, okay, the land bridges to go to different countries. But now, because of um, the because of the continental drift okay, or the diastrophism, diba, every or all the land masses or countries actually separated, okay, or different um, continents were actually. Formed. Also, it is believed that the Philippines were actually attached to another Asian country, which is Vietnam. Okay, so there. So that is your continental drift theory. Okay, so now I want to know your ideas about it. Okay, I have here activity that I want you to look at. Or to make okay first i want you to log into blink go to your social literacy folder and join in the debate or discussion about what theory is more believable okay. is it the volcanism theory or the continental drift theory okay tell me and your classmates about your opinion on what um theory you think is plausible Okay, so if your answer is volcanism theory, tell us why in one to two sentences. If you're um if you believe in the theory of continental drift by by Dr. Alfred Wegener, tell us why in one to two sentences. Okay, and we're gonna be sharing your answers tomorrow, and we're gonna be further discussing or reviewing these theories by tomorrow. Okay, so that's the fifteen minutes of our discussion for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody. Stay safe and have a, have a great day.